Now, Flynn is seeking immunity from investigators looking into Russia's meddling in the U.S. election. And joining us for more on this is Scott Lucas. Now, he is a professor. He's an American professor, but he's at England, uh, a university in England, uh, and he's a leading uh, at the University of Birmingham, rather, uh, and he joins us now. So thanks for joining us, Mr. Lucas. Um, th these previously undisclosed payments from Flynn, uh, they're out there now, but what do you make of them, and what do you make of their late release? Well, we actually knew of uh, details of these a couple of weeks ago uh, because there were documents released to a representative, Elijah Cummings, on the House Oversight Committee. And it showed that $65,000 were paid to Flynn by uh, three Russian entities, including the state broadcaster RT, so he could join, uh, join them and sit beside President Putin at a ceremony in December 2015. Uh, so the documents themselves don't really give us anything, you know, dramatic, except they add to the ongoing story. And that is specifically for Flynn. He did not reveal any of this information uh, while he was with the Trump campaign. And then when he became national security advisor, not only the Russian ties, but hundreds of thousands of dollars from the Turkish government. And then more widely, they continue to keep focus on what the bigger story is. And that is when Michael Flynn spoke five times with the Russian ambassador, on December 29th, the day that uh, Barack Obama increased sanctions on Moscow for interfering in the U.S. elections, when Flynn spoke to that ambassador five times, did he do so just on his own, or did someone in the Trump team tell him to go and make those calls? Okay, let's try and figure out what this latest development and, as you say, the ongoing situation, what effect that could have on uh, Flynn's uh, efforts to be granted immunity and his potential testimony uh, to, and now we have the Senate Intelligence Committee looking into this. So it's interesting that this disclosure uh, comes out a couple of days after it is revealed that Flynn, through his lawyers, has approached the FBI and the committees willing to testify. Uh, we don't know the extent of that testimony yet, but because he asked for immunity, we assume that it may involve activities which he thinks could be illegal or at least put him at risk of prosecution. Now, so far, that offer has not been accepted by congressional investigators or the FBI, interestingly, because I think they are collecting more and more information and they may not need Flynn to make their case, or they at least want to know that he has evidence that is valuable to them. So what could that be? It could be uh, not only these conversations with the Russians, but it could be, and I stress could, could be evidence of the Trump campaign's financial and political links with Russian interest, naming several other Trump uh, officials, some of whom are still around the president, as being involved. Now, we wait to see. We won't see this through the House Intelligence Committee because their chairman, a man named Devin Nunes, has been compromised, is effectively working with the White House. But it is the Senate Intelligence Committee which will begin talking to witnesses privately this week. And that's what we need to watch, because that is where the hearings that could elevate this political controversy to the point, well, to honestly, to the point of uh, impeachment, that's where the arena may be. Okay, you've said the word impeachment, and you've raised the big could-be questions out there. Sure. Uh, some have already drawn parallels, uh, potentially, to Watergate. People forget that Watergate was a 26-month process, and the man who spoke at that time, uh, James uh, uh, John Dean, rather, who, who got the ball rolling effectively, the man from inside the administration. Is it too early to draw that comparison? It's not too early to say that this is the most serious political crisis not just for the Trump administration, but for America as a whole in 40 years. But I think, John, it's going to be quicker than Watergate. And, and that is in part because of 24-7 media, but something even more important. That is that many officials within the Trump administration are driving this by continuing to drip feed information out to the media, because this is a divided administration. Uh, the bigger political story here is, I think, and this is unprecedented, you have an executive that's trying to steamroller Congress, trying to steamroller agencies, trying to steamroller the courts, and people are fighting back this way by releasing information. And I don't think there's a compromise on this. Either Trump and his inner circle win, and we get a very different type of U.S. government, or we do see this to the point where I think Trump is uh, going to be fighting in a corner and deciding whether or not he can stay on. It's interesting that you say this could be if it plays out faster than Watergate. Well, we're watching. Thank you for this, Scott. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Scott Lucas speaking to us from the University of Birmingham in England.